Hey guys, it's Jake and welcome to day 14 of learning to program in Ruby. Today we're going to be going over some loops. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. I'm working on a GIMP series right now that is the open source version of Photoshop. I am a designer by trade. We're also going to be going over JavaScript. So if you're interested in JavaScript, we're going to be starting that series probably here in the next month or two. So let's go ahead and start our first loop. And the first one is going to be our while loop. So if you don't have the editor open or a text editor open, go ahead and open one up. So let's first create a variable. We're going to make that variable bomb timer. And we're going to set that equal to 10. So it's already set at 10. The first loop we're going to create is a while loop. So go ahead and type while in right there. You can see that it automatically colors in because it's recognized as a method. And we're going to make this bomb underscore timer. And we're going to set it so that if it's greater than or equal to zero, and you'll get this in a minute, but if it's greater to or equal than zero, it's going to put bomb timer. And we've set bomb timer to 10. So right now, if we were to actually um, run this program, it would be an infinite loop because what will happen is, is it would put bomb timer uh, 10 and then it would put bomb timer 10 again and then bomb timer again and it just keep going forever and ever as long as bomb timer stays 10. So in order to get bomb timer down to lower or to equal zero, what we need to do is go below puts and we need to do bomb timer underscore and again you could just hit tab um, I don't really like to use as many shortcut keys while we're doing these tutorials because people can get lost like your control S is and your control you know your copy paste and all those things um, a lot of newer people with these tutorials but um, will not see what's going on but I do like to start slowly incorporating those things I think I talked about that in the last episode but um, I will be stating them out loud or I'll just get a program that'll show you what keys I'm hitting in the meantime um, so let's do bomb timer and we're going to set that equal to uh, bomb timer underscore and we're going to do plus one, or sorry minus one minus one so that's going to subtract one every time so the next time it comes around it's going to be nine and so it's going to be putting puts bomb timer 10 and then it'll be putting puts bomb timer nine because we've just subtracted one from bomb timer now we need to go down here and just end it and then let's go ahead and save it as bomb timer Dot RB. And then go go ahead and open your command prompt with Ruby. And then pull that in. And you can see here it says undefined local variable or method bomb bomber timer for main. So you see here we've already done uh, puts bomber timer and this seems to be gotten rid of right here bomb timer bomb timer all that's good go ahead and hit save again and let's pull that in hit enter so now it goes 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 and now that it is equal to zero this time around it did not cycle through so if you think about it it is looping through each time it goes so bomb timer is equal to 10 and then it says while bomb timer we still haven't subtracted anything from the timer yet it says while bomb timer is greater than or equal to zero we're going to be putting bomb timer so bomb timer is currently at 10 so it's going to put bomb timer and that's that right there and then on the next line we are subtracting one from bomb timer so now when we come back through this loop bomb timer is now set to nine as you can see and then now it's going to be putting bomb timer Hope that makes sense and is clear. Now with Ruby, there's different ways that Ruby that you can tell Ruby to do things. There's shorter ways of writing this code. And one of those is to instead of writing bomb timer bomb timer twice here, what you can do is go ahead and delete that section right there. And we're just going to write negative equals and we're going to just write one. So what that does is it makes the bomb timer negative one and it just references this original variable. So go ahead and hit save and then we can pull this back in. And hit enter. And you see here it worked perfectly again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we can go ahead and exit out of that for now. So that's pretty simple. Here we have a timer that while it is, while this variable is higher than zero, it's going to be putting it. And we can actually count up. 
So if we were to put this at zero, and we were to, while, while bottom timer is uh, 10, and we're gonna set this if, as long as bottom timer is less than 10, we're gonna put bottom timer. Instead of minus one, because if we did that, it would start uh, going to negative one, negative two. What we need to do is come down here, and we need to do plus, or not, or sorry, yes, plus one here. For some reason, I thought my cursor was a minus uh, symbol. So it goes bomb timer plus equals to one. And then we can go ahead and save that and reopen up our uh, command prompt and pull in bomb timer and hit enter. Now it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is because we set our bomb timer at zero. But again, we could arbitrarily set this at anything. We can actually set this at negative five if we wanted to. And we could save that there and pull that back in and hit enter. Negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. So you can see all that, that makes total and perfect sense. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. The next condition we're going to cover is the until loop. The until loop is similar to the while loop, except for it's, it's the opposite in a way. While these conditions are true, these things will happen. The until loop says, do this until this condition happens. So it's, it's, it's like the antithesis in a way. So we're actually going to write, um, let's make this different from the bomb timer. Let's make this uh, uh, end of time, end of time. I think the until, it's an end of time. And we're going to uh, set this variable equal to, let's just do 50. Go ahead and write the until loop. And then we're going to do end of time. Go ahead and hit tab to until end of. And then go ahead and write um, until end of time is less than, let's do 20. And then we're going to go below that. And we're going to put end of time. Probably should not have used a variable that has the word end in it. This actually brings up a good opportunity to talk about making your programs uh, programmer friendly and readable. Go ahead and right click end of time here. We're actually going to replace this. If you're not in Komodo editor, there should be a way to replace this within your editor. So Google it if, if you haven't already found that feature. So we found end of time and we're going to replace it with of, um, let's just do time fix, time fix and go ahead and replace all of them. And you can see here that it changed it to time fix. So we talked about this in the while, how are we gonna drop time fix to below 20? We're gonna do time underscore fix, and we're going to do subtract, and we're gonna set that equal to one. Go below that and type end. Then we're gonna save the file, and we're gonna save it as, let's just do time fix, and hit save. Open your command prompt and pull the file in. So you can see here that it came all the way through 1549 48 and it did print out 20 because the time that it came through, it was still not less than 20. So it put time fix and then that is why it put. We can actually come in here and change this and we can make this equal to if we wanted to and we could hit save. And then when we pull the file back in and hit enter, it comes to 21. And one thing to note is that we can actually subtract more than one here. So I could actually make this uh, three and then we could save it and we're done again. Go ahead and pull in time fix there and it'll say 50, 47, 44 and then it'll come all the way down. Now we're gonna be going over the loop do. And so for this one, we're actually going to illustrate, I'm going to illustrate a story here. We're going to have health points and we're going to have a health points total of 30. And below that, we're gonna write loop do. Every time we go through this loop, we're going to subtract two HP. So we're gonna write HP minus equal and we're going to set that to two. And then below that, we're gonna write our puts and we're going to write damage, damage done. See, damage done, I'm trying to think, what should we do? HP remaining, 
And here we want to call our, vari or our variable. And if you remember to call our variable, what we do is we do the hashtag and then our curly braces. And then we're gonna write HP in between that. Now let's go down to the next line. And now we wanna break this loop. And we're gonna break this loop if our damage goes to zero. So we're gonna write break if, and then we're gonna write HP is less than or equal to zero. Now below that we can end it. And then we're going to put game over. Now go ahead and save it. And we're going to save it as game over. Game over dot RB. It's off the screen. Game over dot RB. And hit save. Open our command prompt and pull it in. Go ahead and hit enter. So it's going through this loop and it says damage done, HP remaining 28. Goes through it again and you see it's going through it multiple times, four, two, zero. Once it hits zero, it no longer goes through this loop that we've created and it'll just output the next one, which is game over. The next method I'm gonna be introducing you to is the next if. So go ahead and write even, we're gonna set that equal to 200. And then we're gonna do loop do. And we're gonna do even, and we are going to subtract five. Now this is where I'm going to explain what next if it is. What we will do here is we will write next if. And then if this condition is true, we are going to just skip the, we are just going to start over our loop. So you can see here, if we go from order order of operations, it does our even is 200. So the first thing we do is we subtract five from 200. Go ahead and write next if. And here we want to skip anything even that is odd. Now, not to confuse you, but what we're gonna do is we are going to modulo this. And if you remember what modulo is, is it gives you the remainder of a number. Now in order to get the, the evens, it would make sense that we'd wanna divide our number by two because anything that is even is divisible by two. And we're gonna set this equal to not even two. So we're gonna write not Equal, or sorry, not equal to zero. Because anything we put in like like 200, if we were to modulo that by two, it would be zero because there would be no remainder. It would go into it 100 times. And if you haven't learned from the other lessons here, just make sure to look up what modulo is. We are going to skip it if there is anything that is not zero. So if we were to do 201, because that is an odd number, it will have a remainder of one because two goes into 200 100 times, and there would be one left over if, if the number was 201. I hope that's making sense. If not, just ask in the comments, and, and I'll clarify it for you. And then we're gonna actually puts it out. So let's do puts, and then let's do our, uh, our hashtag and our curly braces, and let's put in our even. Now we don't want this to go on forever, so we're gonna break it. So break if even is less than or equal to zero. Go ahead and end that. All right, now let's save this to, um, I guess we can save it as breaker. I've already saved it as breaker. Go ahead and open the command prompt. and pull in breaker. Now hit enter. So let's slide this over. We skipped 195 because 195 was not an even number. Now this even has nothing. We could have named this anything. So not to, not to confuse you, let's uh, change this by replacing this with, um, let's replace it with uh, any underscore number. And uh, you can save it as you have it. It's not a big deal just don't want to oh, replace all and then let's save it and bring it back in so you can see that it does the exact same thing 
I just don't want you to think that, that having that variable say even means anything at all. So see it says 190, 180, 170, 160, 150, 140. It goes all the way down to zero. And the reason it because we did any number, we've subtracted minus five, right? So the first one that it would have displayed was 195. But because we did the next if any number is uh, not equal to zero when we modulate it by two, we go right back up to the top. If we didn't need to go next if is, we would have just put the number. We would have checked break if any number is less than zero or equal to, but because it wasn't, then we came right back up to our loop and we went through it again all the way through. See, if we come in here and I'm getting, a, I'm getting a notification on my phone, it's all good. So if we come in here and we were to do um, any numbers minus one, and let's subtract the, let's just start at a hundred here and hit save. Pull that in. Go ahead and hit enter. And it gives us all of our even numbers between one and a hundred. So I hope all these loops are clear. I know we went through several of them, but there is, there is actually more that we can go over and we will do that in later episodes. Um, for now, if none of it is making sense, if it's not making clear 100% sense, just keep pushing forward onto the next episode and it'll all kind of come together. You can always watch and come back through the video again. And you know, if you're ever feeling kind of iffy on anything, again, just go back a few episodes and rewatch everything just to refresh yourself. I know I said I was going to do a weekly one, but I think what I'm going to do is just wait till I have all of the days because, you know, I might go to 28 days. I might go even higher than that. And I just want to, at that point, I want to then codify everything and make sure everything is important, add in stuff that I should have put in earlier. And, uh, and I just think that the quality of those week one, week two, week three, week fours will be a lot better if I wait till I have at least um, a month's worth. My name is Jacob Williams. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be going on to JavaScript here probably in the next month or two. I don't know if I said that at the beginning, but uh, we I am working on a GIMP tutorial series right now, and we're going to be kind of doing GIMP and our Ruby tutorials interchangeably, kind of every other day type thing. Talk to you later. Bye.